Hello everybody. Um, okay, so naturally if you travel quite a bit, there, there will be a few things that have sort of become essential for your, for your travel needs. And I've got about like a couple of things, two or three things that I always carry with me on any particular trip, um, whether it be from a traveling point of view or to have out in the field. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a few of those things to you. And the first thing I always carry with me is noise cancelling headphones. Now, believe it or not, when I'm traveling, um, I'm not the kind of person that if I sit next to you, I'll start making random conversations. So I prefer to go in a bit of a zone when, um, when, I'm, when I'm traveling, especially when I'm, when I'm flying. Unless, obviously, I'm traveling with clients, then, um, you know, then I'll obviously sort of uh, keep conversation going with them and chat about the safari. But if I'm traveling by myself, noise cancelling headphones, um, a lot of the time there might be kids on the plane. Um, I've got two kids at home, so I have my fair share of, um, of moaning and complaining. So when I'm traveling, I don't want to hear anyone else keep the, no um, the headphones on. And what I usually do is um, I would maybe download a few uh, movies or uh, a series or two to put on my phone and then watch that on the plane or you know when I'm traveling. So noise cancelling headphones, vital for me. Um, the second thing I love to carry with me is, uh, is a battery bank. So this is a, a, a snug battery bank and it's great for when you're traveling to be able to charge your phone. I can also charge my GoPro with this. So very, very handy to, to keep with me. I think I get about maybe five or six um, charges on my phone. So, you know, whether I'm in a vehicle, I can keep my phone charged or even on the plane as well. So very, very handy, always stays with me. And then um, another thing that I always um, travel around with, and this is more sort of in the field, is a kikoi, or also known as a sarong. So very popular in East Africa. Uh, and these things are great, you know, you can either sort of wrap yourself around it. This is quite a big one, actually. And uh, recently I used um, this to also cover my camera, which I love to do. It just keeps the camera dust free. So very easy, got your camera, just wrap it around and um, that keeps it free from, from dust. And then also you can keep this out of your camera bag and um, your, your camera then doesn't sort of get, get scratched or gets dust on it. So kikoi or a sarong, very, very important. Also like to carry a, a, a beanie with me as well. And that has got a similar sort of purpose. If I take the kikoi off, with uh, with a beanie, you can then just wrap wrap it around your camera like that, and it also just keeps your camera nice and, and dust free. Obviously, now with winter coming up, beanies um, also come in very handy for obvious reasons. So beanie will stay with me um, on any particular travels. Talking about camera bags, um, personally, I love to use this f-stop bag. So this is the uh, Tulopa um, edition, very, very cool bag, lots of space. Um, on numerous safaris, I carry two, even three lenses with me, two camera bodies, um, laptops, and then obviously these things that I mentioned, my noise cancelling headphones, um, battery bank, all those things go with. So very, very handy, amazing camera bags if you're looking for a good um, camera bag. And it also fits in the overhead compartments, which is, which is great. Um, from a traveling point of view, especially at airports, I like to get into a bit of a routine. Um, usually, sort of, I love getting to the airport very early. I hate sort of rushing around. So, depending on each airport, um, I find my sort of favorite spots that I like to hang out. Like I mentioned, usually way ahead of time, um, having a cup of coffee or a cappuccino or something, um, and just sort of getting into that zone of traveling. Now, from a safari point of view, um, one of the first things I love to do when I get to, to lodges is to make friends with the right people in the camp. And this is vital, actually. So, um, there's three people I really want to get, um, get to know well. And the first one is the manager or the person that, that runs the show. And that's sort of for obvious reasons. You know, if I'm not happy with something or my clients are not happy with something, I like to deal with one person and I like it to be sort of the top person, um, just to, so you don't sort of go through different channels. Also, if that person, if you get along well, you know, the, that's the kind of person <clears throat> that will do favors for you, that will make sure 
you know, you get that extra bit of attention, which I really want for my clients. The second person um, I really want to get to know well is uh, my guide. So I would uh, sit down with uh, our local guide and just give them a bit of a brief on, on what we're looking for. If we're going to multiple destinations, I'll give them a rundown of what we've seen, just so we don't go and stop at another Impala or another Zebra or something like that. So we have a, a set goal um, at each destination that we go to. And then the third person is the barman. Um, I, I, I love to sort of um, get to know the, the barman quite well. They, they're usually guys that um, have got a lot of character full of jokes. But um, the, I'd like to give them a rundown of each of my clients. So usually the guests that I travel with, um, I get to know them very well, get to know what drinks they enjoy. And also even then, you know, just making sure that they get a drink in their room if, uh, if need be. So yeah, those are the three people I really like to, to get to know in a camp. Something for me that is an absolute must on any safari is sitting around the fire. I absolutely love it. For me, a safari is not a safari if there's not a fire going. So, um, and each evening I try, or even in the morning sometimes as well, depending on the, on the destination, I'd love for the camp to have a fire going and encourage my clients to, to sit around the fire. I think that's when true friendships are made and it just gives you a sort of... Um, a real sort of feeling of being in Africa. It gives you time to soak up everything that's around you. So a campfire for me, if there's no campfire, um, it's not a safari. Um, I don't really have many superstitions when it comes to safari. The one thing I do have is I always travel with, uh, with two pairs of shoes. Um, and I've got a few reasons for that. The first reason is because one year in the Serengeti, my, uh, one pair of my shoes got taken by hyenas. So always have two pairs of shoes, but I've sort of developed and it's been like the last three years, a bit of a superstition where if I have a particular um, pair of shoes on and sightings have been good, I'll st stick with that particular pair of shoes. As soon as sightings sort of drop off or we have a bit of an off day, you know, quiet game viewing as such, I will then swap the pair and put the other pair on. Um, if the next day, if the game viewing is bad, I'll swap back again. But if it stays good, I'll stick with that pair of shoes uh, for the duration of the, of the safari. Um, it's just a bit of a superstition that I've, uh, I've built up over the years. That's it for me. I um, can't wait to travel again. I'm sure you guys feel the same. And um, I look forward to um, sort of helping you guys on, on future travels. I hope this uh, helped you a little bit. And I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any anything in particular that you always travel with or if you have any safari superstitions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your time. Until next time, cheers.